Welcome back aboard Blurred Force One with your boys Mo and Lottie. And this is the Supercast. The Supercast where we talk about all things superhero and our pop culture media. That's movies, TV shows, video games. We talk about the news, do some speculation, all that good nerdy stuff. And before we get into the podcast today, do us a favor, get down there, hit like on this video. Or if you're listening to us on a podcasting platform, uh, go ahead and leave a, you know, a review. Five stars would be great, but whatever you think, we deserve. And we are in uh, the Madam Web week. Uh, we are within, uh, you know, what, what do they say in, uh, uh, Neji say, uh, in the sphere of divination for Madam Web. And um, I have some things to say about that. If you guys have been paying any kind of attention to the internet, uh, people have been talking about Madam Web and it's... It's definitely a movie that exists. So uh, we'll get into that. Uh, but before we do, Lottie, my friend, how you doing today? And uh, what you been up to that's nerdy? Uh, well, uh, I rewatched, uh, you know, I was just scrolling through Netflix and I decided to rewatch some of the episodes of uh, Love, Death, and Robots, which is, you forget how uh, weird that show is, but... <laughs> I still have. I episodes. still have never watched it. Uh, oh, it's really good. It's, it's. Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember. It's 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 based off of. It's made by the same. It's like same people. Not of course. It's different animators, but the people who are like compiling it together are the same people who did this. Uh, this sort of like thing on Adult Swim way back in like the late. 90s, early 2000s. I can't remember what it was called, but it was sort of just like it. Um, I also watched a really good new uh, series that I really recommend that you watch. It's called Blue-Eyed Samurai. It's like adult Mulan in Japan. It's really good. Really, really good. Really good. Um, do, they get that, video well, do they get down to business to defeat the Huns? <laughs> no, well, it's in Japan. I know, so I know, you, fight I, I know yeah. you said Mulan, that's all. That's Yeah. <laughs> But it's really good. It's good. It's I really highly recommend people watch it. It is. Do not, do not. If you have kids, like don't watch this with kids. And I don't mean just for the violence. When I say like it's rated M, I'm talking about yeah. You actually see sex, like legit sex in it. Nice. Uh, so- sounds like anime. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been playing video games and playing God of War finally finished my latest animation for valentine's day it's actually probably my best one so guys go check that out nice so you've been get your nerd on um i do i've been pretending like i want to play tekken but I'm, I'm really just messing around trying to figure out what character to play i don't know i was i was fooling around with brian the other day that's that uh, yes clip that out y'all but i was fooling around with the character brian and seems interesting i don't know if he's any good but it was it was interesting i don't know i'm gonna figure it out and uh besides that started watching the halo series uh that just uh dropped last week watched the first couple episodes it remains a bit of an enigma to me not not in the sense that i don't understand what's going on i do understand what's going on i just don't know how close to halo it is the the actual series because i don't know halo well enough but um it's it looks pretty good. The, the opening the opening like ten minutes of that first episode of the new season is pretty great. So um, it's just there's it's it's doing some stuff that it makes me feel like they're taking liberties. I I just I don't know, but it's it's cool so far. I'm enjoying it. Of course, I went to see Madam Web, and I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, so overall, it's I mean it's been a pretty cool nerdy week. I'm and um you know I'm I'm making some decisions about some shows I'm going to watch. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be going back and watching the X-Men animated series from the 90s. So, And you'll you'll understand why when we talk later. So anyway, uh, like, this is the Supercast. We are going to talk about superhero news, uh, you know, for comics and movies and video games and TV shows and all that good stuff. So uh, such things as uh, we got a couple quick little 
uh, things that are happening. Ben Mendelsohn talks about who he wants to be in the MCU. Yes, a different character. Uh, Christopher Nolan has some surprising things to say about the MCU. Uh, I'm going to give some, uh, I guess, a small sort of review, quick thoughts about Madam Web. That's going to segue us into a conversation about the Sony Spider-Verse and what's going on with it. Uh, there's a first trailer for X-Men 97, the new animated uh, you know, series that's coming to you from Disney+. Plus. Invincible Season 2 Part 2 gets a trailer as well. Uh, big news for Marvel where uh, the announcement of the Fantastic Four, who's going to be the, in the cast. And then Deadpool and Wolverine dropped a big trailer for uh, this, uh, you know, this weird little sport, sporting event that no one cares about because all we wanted to see was the trailer. So we'll talk about that trailer and uh, get into it. So Lottie, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, man, let's get into it. Uh, so just a couple of quick things. We're not going to really discuss this. It's more of an interesting uh, bits of news. Uh, ben Mendelsohn, uh, who recently was done dirty. Is that fair to say, Lottie, done dirty uh, in, in, in Secret Invasion? Like, yeah. ab- absolutely. Just uns- killed in the... You know what? It's, it sucks enough to get your character killed off. But it sucks even more to get it killed off in a shitty series. So, uh, in, in a stupid way, unceremoniously. Either way, uh, Ben Mendelsohn's Talos died in Secret Invasion, which leaves open, some, you know, a, a lane for him to, re, you know, to resurface as a different character. And he says he wants to be Doctor Doom. Uh, Lottie, co-sign this or not? Eh, honestly, I don't. Eh. <laughs> I... <laughs> I ca- I have no feelings towards this whatsoever, because we don't know. Well, I mean, they're gonna kind of have to go ahead with Doctor Doom, but I doubt it. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, but I mean, he he said I really want to. I think I say yes. You know why? Because you got to give this man a bone after the sh- bullshit they pull with him in Secret Invasion. Like seriously. They fucked. They fucked him over. I, I mean, he he's a professional. He did his thing. But come on, let's let's give this to him. I say yes. Uh, so we'll see. We'll let you guys know if we find out. It probably not. It, it they're not looking at him. But we 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 hope, and we'll see if Kevin Feige says something about it. Uh, the other bit of like quick news. Uh, a look. You know, we're used to Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola. All these other directors being like, eh, comic book movies, MCU. It's it's not it's just it's just an amusement park. It's not real cinema, you know. So, color me surprised, or maybe not so much. So, that Christopher Nolan, uh, one of the great directors, director of Oppenheimer, among many other really great movies, um, had something really nice to say about the MCU. He praised the MCU for basically keeping the you know movie business moving forward. You know, actually making any kind of bank in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, you know, getting some kind of box office, getting people out to the movie theaters uh, in a way that Tenet, I have to say, did not do. So, uh, Lottie, I mean, is this a, a uncommon W for these so-called, you know, all-tour directors? Uh, I, mean, I mean, during the pandemic, really, most of the stuff, like, we go back and you think about it. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that was coming out trying to make something out was those three MCU movies, which was uh, yeah, Black was Widow, was Black Widow, Eternals. Black Widow, uh, you had and, uh, you had uh, No Way Home. You had uh, you had Doctor Strange. Wait, and... No Way Home was at the end of twenty twenty one though. It was fully open when that was coming. You're think you're that's what oh, you're, you're no, thinking. I'm, of I'm thinking. I'm thinking Shang Chi. Uh, oh yeah. well, you're talking like Shang Chi. Black Widow, Eternals, uh, Doctor Strange, and the Ma- Multiverse of Madness. You know, Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, and and look, but that was twenty twenty two though. We were still look. We were still in the pandemic. Yeah. Like that t- pandemic didn't properly end, and it's not even really over. But it didn't really properly end until the end of that year. So I mean, I think it's fair to say that you know twenty twenty on you know for the next few years. But I you, I get what he says. Like, mm-hmm. the spectacle movies are, and it, look, this is true. 
spectacle movies are really the main driver of traffic to the theaters nowadays. There's only a few, like Oppenheimer's not a spectacle movie. And so it's kind of more of a prestige movie. But like Barbie's a bit of a spectacle movie in, in its way. Uh, the, all of the superhero, those are the ones that are driving traffic. All these smaller movies that I, you know, as a as a film fan would go to, regular people are just like, fuck that, I'm waiting for streaming for that. And so... I kind of I kind of hear what he's saying, especially as a person that likes that prefers the cinematic, you know, theater experience, you know. So it's it's cool. Look, I love to hear directors instead of tearing down comic book movies, instead recognizing how the fact that those things exist can get people in the butts and seats, you know, helps out the whole industry. So good on him. Thank uh, I knew I liked that guy uh, besides just for his movies. <clears throat> So, uh, with those two quick things out of the way, let's get into the meat of what we're going to be talking about today. And Lottie, this, uh, you know, you can take a knee. I think that's something they say in, in sports, right? You can take a knee right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause this is, this is really for me. I went out and saw, uh, Madam Webb for the premiere night. Uh, and Hey, it wasn't an empty theater. It wasn't a full theater either. It was, you know, <clears throat> you can tell. Only the dedicated people were out there on premiere night. And as I understand, Madam Web only made six million dollars in its uh Thursday night opening mm. for a comic book movie. That ain't good. Not good at all. Uh I predict this is probably gonna be like one of the lowest grossing comic book movies ever. Fortunately, I think they only spent something like eighty million dollars on this. I, it's still not gonna make its money back. Like, uh, the reviews are bad. It's I think it's 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's just the reviews are bad. So, all that being said, who cares what all of these other reviewers say? Mo, what did you think about it? And, Lottie, you remember what I talked about? What did I say? It was fine. And mm-hmm. it was fine based on my already lowered expectations. My ex- Look. It, Lottie, neither of us had high expectations for this, right? They're just based on that one trailer. Expectations are pretty low, right? Yeah. And to that effect, it rose to the occasion in the sense that my expectations were so low, it couldn't help but clear the hurdle. And in that in that sense, that's that's my way of saying this movie isn't that good, but it's not bad. It's just average as hell it you know what if you had seen this movie 15 years ago you would not have distinguished it from any of the other output uh the comic book output like it would have been on you know par. What everyone told me what's you that know what, like some people have told me they compared the movie to what's they the... said do you remember daredevil and electra i said yes there you go. That's, I was like, that, "Wow, that's actually not that's not a bad call." It is it is it is a movie that's twenty years too late. Um, it look, this is a movie where it has a cast of people who know what you know they know how to act. Yeah, hell, it, it has like a couple of really great people in it, and they are trying to make something out of nothing and by that i mean a nothing script and with nothing direction like the the the, any if anyone should take shots for this you know should take hits for this it's the directors and it's the writers because this script is garbage it is not good like script is bad um the directing of this bad script is bad um the cinematographer to their credit try to make something out of it and that's try you know emphasis on try and the actors try to make something out of it and most of them didn't make it <laughs> it's like it's just that so you know to put make a long story short the acting's not all that great because they don't have shit to work with uh Dakota Johnson is whatever it's Sydney Sydney Sweeney is just bad her character uh you know is uh, Julia Carpenter. Uh, she, uh, they call her Cornwall. That's not even Carpenter. She, she's just bad. She's just not good. Um, Is- Isabella Merced, 
who I really like, is just whatever. She's kind of whatever in this role. And it's not her. It really is the material. Only people that I really kind of liked in this movie were Celeste O'Connor as Maddie Franklin. And that's only because she was doing her best to make shitty dialogue into something. And then, uh, you know, uh, what's what's his name from uh, from Severance? Uh, he, you know, he's actually a good actor playing Ben Parker, and he's doing his best. And oh, and Mike Epps, I'll give him Mike Epps is in this, and for what little is he's in it, hey, he's doing good. But God damn it, that like the dialogue is the worst. The setup is the worst. The villain suck. The villain sucks more than look. Remember, what's the last bad villain villain you saw in anything in in any comic book movie, Lottie? Just just name name the last bad villain you saw. What what Darben? The last Darben from from the Marvels, maybe. Let's call that. Yep. She is she is Thanos in compared to this motherfucker. He is Ezekiel Sims is a terrible villain. He's he is not scary. Like he is like he is like the most generic motherfucking Spider Man. He's like if what if Spider Man were a bad guy and also just like not compelling. Uh, but beyond that, the actor's not very good at it at, at being this bad guy. And apparently, he sucked at delivering his lines because they ADR a lot of his shit. It's bad, like just really, really bad. So, like, okay, my my expectations are lowered. I'm seeing all of this go down. I'm like, well, maybe this story is going somewhere interesting, and they're going to suit up, and it's going, you know, like you, you see. Tom Holland or, or you know, uh, Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire, eventually they put a suit on and they start whooping ass, right? Right? No. That shit literally doesn't happen in this movie. It's a superhero movie with no superheroes. Like, for I real. I heard that, yeah. For, like, for real. I'm not kidding. If you are going into this movie thinking, oh, man, they're going to put on spider suits and they're going to be, there's going to be Spider-Man fighting a, and a bad Spider-Man. That's not what's happening in this movie. It's it, the reason why this movie is so cheap is because all it, it all the money is spent on one big set piece at the end, and for the most part, everything else is practical effects. In the sense that they put people in suits and they do a scene or two, but there's no actual superhero fights. It is unbelievable that anyone thought that this was going to be a thing. This, this would have been good as a what if episode for like 30 minutes. Like you you strip this down to like what's actually going on. This is a half hour's worth of what if Spider-Man. It's I mean, it's it's ridiculous. The more I think about it, the more I realize like when people are like, is this better than Morbius or is this worse than Morbius? It is. And it's not even worse than Morbius. In the sense that, like, Morbius has more of a story. Mor- Morbius, you know why Morbius is better than this movie? Morbius is better than this movie because Jared Leto s- took a shit, a kind of a shitty script by the same people, by the way, that same people that wrote Morbius wrote this. He took a shitty script and acted it up into something somewhat worth it. Somewhat worth watching. Somewhat interesting to, to behold, right? This is people... Have, being handed a shitty script and not being good enough to make it into, you know, so bad it's good. It's, I mean, it's just that it is, as someone said, it's relentlessly, a, it's uh, it's aggressively average. That's about right. And I, I'm sorry. In this day and age where we've had superhero movies, you know, in the stratosphere for the better part of, you know, 15 years, you can't be this fucking horror, you know, not even horrible, just average, just plain old. This is CW level shit. I know, no, CW level shit's better Damn. than th- is better than this. This would not fly in the Arrowverse. You know, that's that's the sort of thing I'm talking. Like, if this was their idea that they were gonna introduce these characters and we're gonna use them later on down the line, they just killed that. No one will want to fuck with any of the characters. And this is exactly what. I was afraid of. Remember I said before, I was like, I hope 
that this is actually kind of good because otherwise they're going to torpedo these actually good characters. Consider them torpedoed. We're not going to see them again in anything. And yeah. So anyway, I got more to say. Lottie, I want you to see this. I, I demand you see this. If I had to suffer through this, you are going to suffer through this. And we're no. going to talk. We're going to talk about it properly. <laughs> well, we are going to talk about it properly in a proper review. Uh, so I, my recommendation is wait for this shit on streaming. Except you, Lottie. You go to the theater. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that being said, let's transition it to a, a nerd discussion that's directly related to this. Lottie, what the fuck is wrong with the Sony Spider-Verse and how are they going to fix this shit? What is wrong with Easy. It? Easy. Only need two words. Spider-Man. There you go. That's all you need. Now, if look. Where the fuck is Spider-Man? I'm I am so glad Spider-Man wasn't in this shit. You know, Sp uh, to be fair, Spider-Man was in this. Peter Parker was in this as an, a newborn infant. That's it. Because this takes place in 2005 or something like that. <clears throat> I'm so glad none of the Spider-Man had to have their names tarnished by having their fucking name anywhere on the credits for this. I'm so glad there's no post credit scene. Nobody of any, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, consequence to this, to the Spider-Verse has anything to do with this movie. And that's good. Um... Yeah, no, they they can't do this with this movie. What is, what is wrong with them? I'm gonna I'm gonna su submit something. Some I've been seeing other reviews and everything. This is a this was a a property to maintain the license. They have this license. They got to make stuff with it, and so they're just throwing a little bit of money to keep it going. Because if this yeah. was if this was an honest attempt to build the Spider Verse up. This whoever fucking greenlit this looked at this, looked at the dailies, looked at the final edit <clears throat> and said, cool, put this in the theaters. They need to be fired because that's this is bullshit. It, it was, you know, what's wrong with with the Sony Spider-Verse? It isn't. I don't think it's because I don't think it's no Spider-Man. I think that they are trying to make there it's like they're trying to make bargain basement superhero things and they're doing it with no real plan no care like there's no it's not even just that there's no kevin feige no one seems to be understanding that there there ought to be some care and interest in making something that actually is worth a damn otherwise don't do it like otherwise, don't don't even bother with this, because this this shit. Well, here's the thing: th like, they don't even really. Okay, what were you about to say? No, I was just gonna say Morbius was a was something. If it, it felt like like the thing about Morbius said, it's not good, but it felt like they were trying to do something, like they were it they were attempting to make something happen. This, I don't even understand what. What was the purpose here? It, and it's, it isn't just that. This makes me think Craven is going to be another one of these things. And it even makes me wonder about Venom. Like, like this is... This movie and just like the trajectory of the Spider Sony Spider-Verse tells me that they don't really fucking know where they're going. They don't know what they're doing. The, the executives over there... This may even be a consequence of Amy Pascal sort of kind of going on her own. Because you remember she was, she and Avi Arad were the primary movers of the Spider, the Spider-Man movies from way back in the day. But she's not really over there. She she gets a producing credit, but she's not actually involved in the day-to-day -day production of these things. And I don't think Avi Arad is either. And as much shit as he gets, at least you can say that when he was, you know, more actively involved, we got something that was worth a damn. And to, to put my final point on it, we're in a time where we get these Spider-Verse movies, and as much as people shit on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, 
it is goddamn end game compared to the crap they've been putting out. Like on, on the real, it is the it is so much better. Amazing Spider Man Two is so much better than all of this. And and like I, I wish we could get back to that. Anyway, Lottie, you were saying. I would say they don't really even really need to, in my opinion, they don't even really need to even get get with uh, Marvel to do a Spider-Man movie. They have amazing Spider-Man writers that can do this stuff. They just need to communicate with them, and that's Insomniac. Like, if you played the Spider-Man games, it's the best Spider-Man media that has been ever been made, in my opinion. And then you got the people who... Who do the uh what's it called across the Spider Verse? There are talented people in the Spider Man, in the Spider Man thing. Why are you not using them? Why have them? And then I'll make that like if you want to create, if you truly want to create a Spider Verse, it's like you said, you can't be bargain bin with this shit. You think you can just make five dollar movies and think you're gonna make? hundreds of millions of dollars because they clearly didn't expect this movie to make a billion dollars i know oh, that hell, oh hell but no. we know that but i'm just saying if you want to create a spider universe because that's what they are trying to do it is this they are trying to make a spider verse because everything spider-man related is connected across the spider verse and the new spider-man game confirmed this that everything since the dawn of spider-man ever showing on tv is all canon is all canon all of it is canon in this massive spider-verse if you want to do that with being cheap sony if you're thinking you can you can uh sega dreamcast this shit and think you're gonna make have people get butts and seats to even care about your stuff because it's gonna get to the point that people don't even care to look at your stuff like you said venom might venom might just not do well because people are going to come watch this new Spider-Man movie because it's Spider-Man. But Venom might do bad now because people are just going to be like, eh, I don't know. You know what I mean? So it's just like you have the talent. Get the pe talk to the people in the Somniac. Talk to the people who did you across the Spider-Verse. Have them be like, I guess, hire one of them and make them the head of your Spider-Man verse and have them hire good writers. You know what I mean? Because why would you, uh, just just being honest? Why would you bring back the person who did who did Morbius to do this movie? Like, come on now! Like, what were you <clears> thinking? <throat> yeah, and it's just not, it, it, it is not even even if they created a masterpiece. Because not every single I seen the thing that they did. Not every single movie that they did was bad. But still, the last movie they did was Morbius. Come on now, no, dude. You kind of you're you're hitting on something else. Like, how on earth? What is there? Do they have a contract or something? Do they are they guaranteed to get their shit made? Because there's no reason they should have, you know, should have been the writers on this, Madam Webb. There's no reason like their their work, their output. Like they they did Dracula Untold, which I think was fine, but it's not a great movie. Yeah. And and they did Gods of Egypt, which isn't isn't very good either. So, I mean, and they did Morbius. That's enough. You like, why are you giving these guys money? Like who, 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 what, what do they know that that's keeping them working? And you can't tell me you're like, well, you know, they put, they have consistent output. Yeah. It's consistently mediocre or bad. Like, yeah. look, I, and I say this as a part, I couldn't do their job. I'll, I'll say that, but this was just, and I, and, and this, there's so many, there's so many, uh, you know, signs that this was this was fucking you know work to death like this this started i can tell this started out as a not very strong or good you know uh idea or set of ideas and they kept trying to work it up into something and i just can't imagine who the fuck looked at this and said hey this is good and who keeps doing this <clears throat> they need to be fired like like on the real. They need to they need to go. They are driving the Spider Verse into the ground. And for every one of these shit movies, you you know, yes, they're making across the Spider Verse look bad. 
it's because they're associated. They're making Craven's gonna fucking tank because of this. Venom's gonna like suffer too as long as if they can't separate themselves away from all of this. And it just makes me wonder. Like Sp- Sony, people are talking about like, oh, Sony, they should just sell the Spider thing back. They're never gonna do that. But they sure as fuck need to start actually taking this, you know, this uh, you know, license seriously, and stop playing. Or if you can't, like, seriously, if whoever looked at this, they should have said, "We're not putting this out," and just and just took a loss, and, and, just, and just put it on streaming. Like, like no, dude, not fuck. Even put this is like you would have been even if they put it on streaming, it still would have been like a waste of money. This I can't. I hate to say it. Madam Web is a movie that if they had just Zazlabbed it, they would just like, yeah, we're not gonna put it out. We're just gonna shelve it. No one will ever see it. The world would not have changed at all. Like you, this is not like yeah. this is not like you know Coyote versus Acme, where people are like, oh, this is good. Why are they doing? No, this is not that. If they had shelved this and took a, a tax write off for it, the world would probably be better for it so anyway oh my god what are they gonna do how are they gonna fix this uh and can they fix it in time for when they actually have spider-man back so that they don't fuck it up we'll see (laughs) anyway uh we'll talk about this more uh in the future i'm sure especially when craven comes around later this year so lottie let's move on to some greener pastures uh the 90s are back man it's all, it's all good. We're, you know, we, we, last time we heard the little catchy X-Men tune was in Miss Marvel, but she's not the only mutant that's showing up, uh, you know, for Marvel. And for this year, we're going to get X-Men 97. It's coming out, uh, in, on March 20th on Disney Plus. And we got a neat, neato little trailer that, uh, I don't know about you, it really kind of took me back, you know, you know, back to my uh, to the old school days when I would sit in front of the TV and eat Fruit Loops and and uh, just watch some good old X Men cartoons. So Lottie, we both watched this trailer. Uh, what do you think, man? Feel my pain and freedom. I am onslaught. <laughs> oh, Who's I don't coming? even is is onslaught in this season? I don't know. Mm-mm. <laughs> Onslaught is coming. I'm t- you. I, I how so? Both right? him it, and Magneto are dead. Oh, feel my pain and freedom. Here coming. He's coming. Well, you saw the big. You saw, you saw the big arm on the ground, and then you saw the Sentinels working to get. I said, Onslaught is coming. <laughs> but I, but besides that, I love the art style. Absolutely love the art style. I love how they made it modern, but made it look nostalgic at the same time. You know they they had a few set pieces with with the uh, the Cajun claws. That's what I call. That's what I'm gonna call them. <laughs> the Cajun. <laughs> claws. Where they put what's his they put these uh, explosive things on uh, Wolverine's claws. Uh, 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 Scott is less of a dick. Scott is less of a dick because he has to be. <laughs> um. What else? Like, oh, I just love how everybody just looks the same. I just love how they just kept it 90s. I'm just like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No <laughs> updated no updated looks at all. Everyone looks the exact same. And I absolutely love them for doing that. Yeah. It's this was a, it was a good trailer. Like, we've been wondering about this show for a while. Uh, when it was it coming out, you know, that this was, this was something that I think a lot of people are anticipating, probably not a bunch of younger people because they didn't, you know, they haven't witnessed the glory that was the low, low budget animation from the nineties that for the X-Men and it's cause you know, kiddies last, you know, back in the day when, when we were younger and we watched the X-Men in the nineties, they made up for the shitty animation with good stories. So and and X Men was a, one of the first times we saw long running storylines for multiple seasons and you know long running um, conflicts and everything like that. It's iconic. I like to think that the X Men animated series led directly to the X Men movies because there's a lot of DNA in the movies and and the X Men animated show. And in fact, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure Bri- Brian Singer actually took a lot of 
uh, inspiration from the animated series. Uh, that said, trailer was on point. Uh, I agree with you about the animation. They they perfectly emulated it and, and made it a lot smoother. It's not going to have as many artifacts and everything. It's going to be on higher definition. Uh, we get Magneto back, and it looks like he's going to be kind of running the show. Scott looks like a badass. Everyone, it's, it's just, it, it hits you in the feels, man. Uh, you know, even uh, Wolverine, he's, this is very much not Hugh Jackman Wolverine. And I think people are, we, we've been so used to Hugh Jackman Wolverine. We got to get used to that old knuckle head that we, we used to, you know, know and love back in the day. Yeah, we got to get used to hearing <clears throat> Bub. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Take, like, look, I'm with it. I'm, I'm, to- I'm so with it. I haven't watched X Men, the animated series, in decades, and so I'm actually going to go back and watch the show so I can be ready. I'm it's coming out in, in about a month, and I'm going to be ready for. It. I'm going to go ahead and go back through that series. It, absolutely great. Um, it hit all the member berries, but I also think there's there's plenty here that uh, that I think we can look forward to, especially if they take cues from the '90s comics because remember. The 90s animated show was very much in line with what the 90s X-Men... And and I'd argue that the decade of the 90s was when X-Men really, like, hit its heights. You know what I'm saying? It really, like, ascended to the absolute height of popularity and and all the storytelling and the crossovers and everything. So if they can can really channel the energy of the 90s comics and just kind of present it for, you know... Some new audience that hadn't seen it before, but also us old heads that know what's up. I think it's really gonna follow through. And uh, and let me just say, you know, considering the next, uh, you know, the next trailer we're gonna talk about, they got a little competition going on with you know animated superhero things. Uh, so I hope they really bring, uh, you know, bring bring every uh, bit of power that they can to this, especially because when Scott says. To me, my X Men and everyone rolls out. You know what's going down. So, yeah. I'm I'm excited. Lottie's excited. You guys should be excited too. And we're gonna talk about. It. Of course, we we can't not talk about this when it comes out next month. So you guys come back and check that out. Uh, we are gonna talk about another trailer, as I have mentioned in previously, Invincible season two part two, which is a ridiculous thing that I shouldn't say. Y'all should have just dropped the whole damn series at once i would have waited but whatever whatever <clears throat> we're getting the last four episodes starting on march 14th and uh we're all excited about what they put a, they put uh, say it again Pi day Pi day. no uh it was 314 yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so we're yes. at nerds <laughs> Uh, we're gonna get it. Uh, so we we watched uh, Invincible season two part two trailer. Lottie, there's a lot of there's a lot of exploding bodies in, in, in this trailer. Uh, uh, I was like, I was like, are y'all are y'all making human meat pies or something? As much ground beef as we saw thrown around on this on this trailer. <laughs> and then you see freaking duplicate get her leg snapped by a freaking was wasn't that a uh what's it called what's uh one of her what uh a butcher might no that actually wasn't <clears throat> that's the that was the serpent uh people that we saw in the earlier oh, in the season the yeah society? yeah so apparently they apparently they invade the or you know invade the guardians of the globe's headquarters and then for some stupid reason so it's going down uh, actually, this is a following up from something we saw in the in the first part of the season, where they went, they tried to break into, uh, you know, one of them tried to break into, or not one, not him, one of the uh, other villains broke into the Guardians of the Globe's uh, headquarters. So either way, <clears throat> we get we see uh, uh, we Angstrom Levy is is rolling around in there. We uh, there's some Viltrumite action happening. Uh, there's uh, you know, Mark is off on the home world where he, you know, he got damn near killed uh, of his, you know, of his brother's home world. And in the meantime, yeah. the Guardians of the Globe continue to pro- look like they continue to suck. Am, am I wrong about that? It looks like they continue yeah. to suck. 
I, I I love Mark being like they like don't you need they need your powers back home. It's like oh they're probably taking care of it. Mark motherfucker, you know they're not taking care of it. You know they exactly. ain't. They are not taking care of it. Trust. Then the freaking the squid things from the first season show back up. Oh, and you're like, yeah, oh! the, the, yeah, the bad Martians. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. We knew that they were gonna come up. Yeah, I knew this was a good Just, trailer when I was like, "Damn!" I that's kept saying that. Oh, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> it, it was. It's going. Look, it's going down. These last four episodes are about to like blow the internet up. I feel like a lot, a lot of you. Am I oh, on, yeah. on the right track? Oh yeah, you're completely right. Then, oh, don't even get me started with the uh, what is that thing that's coming up? I, I yeah, the freak. Then there was a little glimpse of I guess adult Mark with freaking. I guess he has a cape, and I was like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait! Got a cape now? Cape, Mark? Is it okay? Okay? I guess that's what Mark will look like in a universe that he stayed good and became a hero. He gets a cape like his dad, and he he looks. So I'm like, oh shit! Well, I am I'm I'm excited. It's about damn time, you know. Like I said, I went and rewatched season one, and I was just reminding myself as I'm watching it. This is why I love this show this much. You just reminded me. I'm just like, this is why I love this show. Yeah, it's you know <clears throat> I mean, yeah, it's it like I said, there's gonna be a it's gonna be a meat grinder. Some people like it looks like there's gonna be a main character is gonna die. Um but beyond that, just there is there's a lot of intrigue going on. I mean, there's still stuff going on with Nolan. You know, we're gonna see some of that stuff. So all that being said, it looks great. I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's coming out March 14th. So there's there's going to be like next month is going to be, you know, chock full of stuff for us fans, uh, especially of animation. And we're looking forward to it. We, of course, we are going to review it and talk all about it when it drops. So uh, Marvel is, you know, they're in the business of like really kind of showmanship. Is that I think that's fair to say they they like to really like, you know, play up their their big announcement and everything and they chose you know valentine's day to reveal something that we've all been talking about speculating if you've been paying half of attention to it uh they uh they posted an image and said hey here's our here's our fantastic four and they announced the you know the new date they're moving fantastic four back uh, to July 2025. Because you remember a couple a week or two ago they were talking about, oh, here's our here's our dates for 2025. Mm-hmm. And and they answered a question about Thunderbolts. We were wondering like, what's up with Thunderbolts? Because we knew they were about to start filming. So Thunderbolts is moving up uh, from July 25th to May 2nd next year, and then July 25th is when Fantastic Four is going to premiere. And we uh, like I said, we got. The casting. And let me just say, pretty much what had been leaked already. But I don't care. It's official. Pedro Pascal will be Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. Uh, We got Vanessa Kirby as... uh, uh, Vanessa Kirby is going to be Sue Storm. Uh, Evan uh, Moss Backrack. Backrock. I'm saying his name wrong. I don't care. A guy from The Bear. Uh, He is going to be Ben Grimm aka the thing and i i forget this i just lost the guy's name uh but he uh the guy from stranger things uh uh who's who played uh eddie munson he is going to be uh he's going to be johnny storm so uh let's see if i might get his name right joseph quinn he's really great actually he's going to be uh johnny storm so lottie and also, did you see that? Did you see the image that they attached to it? Like uh, for for the it's like a it's like a comic panel or something like that. But they the person who drew it drew the likenesses of all of the people into it, uh, and and they had Herbie the robot in it. So just just a lot of red meat for the fans. Uh, I saw a lot of reactions online. But Lottie, what was your reaction to this? I didn't see that. Um, but it's cool to see that they're. Uh... That that Fantastic Four is actually you know coming true because this is one of those things that we've been we've been saying where is Fantastic Four why we have not gotten anything from Fantastic Four and it's good to see that we're it's finally 
finally coming true. I am I am excited for that. You know, you know Pedro Pascal is like I, he's now he's becoming the uh, the rock of uh, superhero movies. If you want superhero slash video game movies, they, if you want them, he's he's available. <laughs> yeah, I say get out there and get that bag, dog. I mean, my my man is out there working, and I am fo- all hundred percent for it. Now, <clears throat> uh, Vanessa Kirby. That's a great. That's a great pick. The la- I just saw her in the latest Mission Impossible movie. She's quite good in it, but she's quite good in general. She looks great. I mean, th- I'm a hundred percent on board. We we heard about her being cast last year. This is, the, you know, they never confirmed it, but the, pretty much we we knew this was happening. Um, Evan Moss back. back I'm saying his name wrong. Whatever. I'm gonna have to find out how to say his name. He he just you know got an Emmy for for the bear uh, on FX. Uh, he is good. I've seen him in other. In fact, he you know he was in Andor also. Um, mm-hmm. So, dude is absolutely a, 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 a class act. He's he's on point. I am excited. <clears throat> uh, I wonder what they're gonna do as far as what he looks like. You know, as the thing, but cool. Uh, as I said before, Joseph Quinn loved him in uh, Stranger Things uh, season four uh, as Eddie Munson. Absolutely, you know, great, you know, maybe breakout role for him. Cool. Uh, and also, it uh, appears this may be partially a period piece. Could be taking place in the 60s. If you saw that picture, it, it appears that maybe it's, it, you know, they are out of the 60s, which is something that people have been speculating about, that the Fantastic Four isn't a modern take but in fact they were con- you know were from the 60s were astronauts and then they disappear and then they come back to our current time okay. so could be cool we don't have any, none of that's confirmed it's just speculation but it's very very nice very interesting to uh to see what they're doing it's it's a real thing now that's that's the important point as you said they're actually doing something with it and uh, I think we're all excited. One thing I will say, I, I just want to talk briefly about the quote controversy, uh, which controversy meaning nerds on the Internet being dumb or weird or or a combination of the two. <clears throat> Lottie, do you know some people don't think they think oh, Pedro Pascal is a horrible idea for this? They there's no it doesn't make any sense. That's what they're saying. <clears throat> Can you guess at the reasons why? Just give me one reason you think people would think he he shouldn't be, uh, you know, Reed Richards. Because he's Hispanic. It yeah you, you hit on you know if this were if this were Family Feud you'd get the number one answer guarantee you. <clears throat> all of the the anti SJW people, all the fandom in his people, you know. They get up in arms about any person that they think is not white enough playing these characters. Which, by the way, let's let's take that as an aside. Look at Pedro Pascal. The motherfucker is white. Yeah, okay, he's got a Spanish name. Surprise, there are white people that have Spanish names. Like what Yeah. He's white. Don't oh he's he's a Spanish. No, he's white. Just let's just take it take it like that. He is. <clears throat> He's not the whitey white 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 that you maybe you're expecting from Reed Richards. He's not like you know pasty it, and, and then burns in the sun as soon as he walks outside the door. He's not that white, but he's white. Like let's just get over that shit. <clears throat> aren't there white? His, aren't there white? There, like, there are white. Spanish, there are white like, Spanish. White pe- Spanish. Yeah, yeah, there are white Spanish. White from Spain. There are white from every place they speak Spanish. Trust me, there are. There are white Mexicans. There are white Argentinians. There are white Chileans. There are uh, all up and down. Any place they speak Spanish, they're white people. Like, just chill out. I, again, because he's not like, you know, he's not, uh, what's his name? He's not Joel Kinnaman, you know. he He's not, uh, you know, he's not from Norway or whatever. Okay, so he's not. Who gives a fuck? Like, that's it's so fucking stupid. That this, 
Lottie, that's that's the where we have arrived at in this world of of polarizing, you know, nerd talk on the internet, this anti diversity bullshit that they're on, that they can't even fucking parse white people. He's not white enough. That's the problem we've gotten to. Get out get the fuck out of here. So that's one. So yes, you get you hit the number one answer. He's his Hispanic, not not white enough. The other thing they hit on was he's too old. My man is forty eight years old. What Reed Richards is old. That, yes. Reed Richards and, is an old character. I'm just uh, He has gray hair. He, he literally has the gray side you know, sideburns and uh, I mean the gray side of his old character. What the what I don't know how to deal with this kind of stupidity. It's what what was he supposed to be? Was he supposed to be teenage? He's supposed to be in his twenties or something? No, the motherfucker should be in his forties. Like, oh, well, he's too old for uh for Vanessa Kirby. First of all, Vanessa Kirby is in her what is she? I, I want to say she's 30, 30 something. She's in her early either late twenties or early thirties, which is what Sue Storm is like. Get y'all know nothing as so-called fans. Shut the fuck up. Go read a comic book. Go read any, le- learn something about the source material. There's always been an age difference between Reed Richards and Sue Storm. You know why? Because they were made up in the fucking sixties. And you know, in the sixties, it seemed pretty normal in pop culture for a guy in his 40s to have a, a wife who's in her 20s. It's different now. It, this takes place in the 60s. Oh, oh, oh no. The shit is, is you know consistent with the original source materials that you motherfuckers don't know. Like, shut the fuck up. Oh my god. <clears throat> this, is, this is the sort of fandom we're dealing with. It's making up excuses for why Pedro Pascal. That, the only one that sounds legit to me is he's there's he's in everything. Okay, fine. He's in everything. So what? So what? Lottie, he's in he's in a bunch of things. He's in Mandalorian. He's technically he's not really in Mandalorian. He's just voicing Mandalorian. He's in Last of Us. And he's in this, and then he does other stuff. So what? Why? Why does that matter? You, he's talented. He's people like seeing him on screen. He's cool. So why why is that a problem? Lottie, is that a problem that he's in everything? Uh, he's not in everything that I that. It's annoying type thing. Uh, it's not like The Rock where it was getting to the point where with The Rock that I was like. Rock is sort of like in everything that is starting to get a little annoying. But him, he just he's only he's only he was in the Mandalorian. He was in um what was that thing called? Uh The Last of Us Part Two, which uh I'm not gonna say anything. Um <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's in this. I mean he's not a I mean he's I don't like, know about him being in every He's got movies coming out, but like um, all look, he's working. You know, he's not turn. It's not like he's just showing up in every fucking thing possible. He's working. It just so happens that he is a major talent and Marvel would be dumb not to try to get him into something, especially in a major role. Why? Why? Let me ask you this. What the fuck would you waste someone of his immense acting ability on a throwaway character or, or a side character or whatever when he's clearly willing to take lead roles in major franchises? Why you'd be dumb not to take advantage of that? If this man yeah. s- told Sony, "Look, I'll be in your Spider-Man stuff," and you made him the fucking villain of of Madam Web, you're an idiot. This is a dude that's bankable. People know his face. People know his voice. He's he, people know him. You put this man front and center, and in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which needs, uh, you know, needs kind of like a jump start, needs a needs a, a pep up. This dude is like, you know, franchise Viagra. Get his ass in there, like this. This this just shit's a no brainer. So, shut up, you people. Shut up. 
you haven't seen anything. The man's fantastic. He's going to do a great job. Just like chill out and stop all this racist bullshit about he don't, he's not white enough. Shut up. Oh, anyway, <laughs> Lottie, we're looking forward to it. That's what I'm saying. So cool. Uh, when we get some more information, especially when they start filming, we'll let you guys know and we'll talk about it then. So finally, Lottie, we got to talk about this. Um, so this last Sunday, something happened, something was going on on Sunday. Um, I'm sure some people cared about it. What we cared about though, was that trailer dog. I, that trailer for Deadpool three, or as it's now called Deadpool and Wolverine officially. Uh, we got a, uh, a teaser on the Super Bowl, and then we got the actual two-minute trailer posted. Uh, I've watched it several times now. I think probably like five or six times now. Uh, Lottie, I don't know how many times you've watched it, uh, but I think we need to talk about this. So, Lottie, uh, what, we wa we actually, the first time we watched it, we were actually watching it together. That's We normally don't do that. Normally, we're, you know, we're off doing our own thing, and then we'll talk about it later. But we were literally sitting next to each other on a couch you know, while the Super Bowl was going on and we checked this out. So, I mean, come on. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome, right? Oh, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. I like how it's heat. You know, we can all put away our fears and stuff. He's still Deadpool. You know what I mean? He's still Deadpool. He's still, he's, he's not afraid to make jokes. I mean, the first joke he makes is about pegging. And this is a movie that Disney's making. So, I'm 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 excited for I am very excited for this. The TVA shows up, which I was not expecting, and I guess he's fighting them and helping them at the same time. I'm, it, huh? it, yeah, I feel like that's probably early in the movie, but yeah, the thing about TVA, I wasn't surprised because they've been talking about Mobius possibly being in this since almost the beginning, like when we realized this was actually happening. So they've been talking about Luke Wilson. I mean, not Luke, Owen Wilson for a while. Um, mm -hmm. But we didn't get Owen Wilson in this. I wonder what that means. Uh, definitely the TVA's in this. Some things have changed. We, I think my when we saw in the, the very beginning where there's that little birthday scene, and I did not realize. Like, do you ever watch something and you don't realize, like, damn, I missed this shit, right? I, I, you know, mm -hmm. I, did, I didn't. I watched it. I'm like... Damn, I forgot how much I loved all these characters. That, by the way, and that one character, we we're like, who that? Who was that? That's Shatterstar. So, like all of these, you know, Yukio, Negasonic, Colossus, you know, um, uh, Vanessa. Just seeing all of them again, I was just like, the gang is back together, man. Like I just, I didn't realize I missed y'all so much. And then, you know, it gets into some more, you know, it, it just. Wade being Wade and just kind of taking everything in stride and being that guy that knows he's in a movie and whatever. And he says, he calls himself Marvel Jesus. I mean, it's beautiful. And then here's the thing, Lottie, these aren't even the best things, the best jokes, the funniest bits, the best action that's going to be in the movie. You know, mm -hmm. this, this trailer is just to kind of, you know, kind of get you, kind of get you pumped up, but they're not showing you the best stuff. They're not even really telling you what the story is. <clears throat> They're just saying, hey, this is some things that are happening. Oh, y'all like Wolverine? You're going to get some Wolverine up in this piece. Uh, and they never... Why, but, Lottie, they didn't show Hugh Jackman, though. Wonder, do, you want, do you wonder why that, that is? You said they, they never what? They never showed Hugh Jackman. Oh, why? Hmm. Well, have, it's because the Wolverine... The Wolverine... I, I kind of I think we talked about it a little bit that I think this is not the Wolverine that they think that we're used to. It's another Wolverine. Could it be? Or could it? Or be, that might be what's his name's Wolverine? Daniel Radcliffe, maybe. Yeah, I I would please God make that real. Please let that be real. I we've been hearing so much about this. I feel like Daniel Radcliffe would absolutely do it. I just want I want that to be real. Look, this this is probably about the per, the most perfect most perfect. That's a this is the the perfect 
teaser or you know teaser or starter trailer for this movie that's coming out in July. You know, so that to get us just to get in mind, like this is something that's happening, and you absolutely want to take your ass to the theater to see this shit. And what a great place to to do the trailer, right? Like Lottie, look, most football fans aren't going to get up and go to to just every superhero movie but they're going to get up to Deadpool, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the cross section yeah. there is is too it's too good. This was like a genius bit of marketing. I think it was a smart play. And god my god, they're doing something good there. There's no Look, I'm not saying this is going to be a 10 out of 10 or whatever like that. I'm not saying this is going to, you know, hit all the marks or whatever. I'm not even saying that this movie is necessarily going to be good. It could be a swing and a miss, but God damn it. They are going to, they're swinging for the fences on this. It, I, am I wrong about that? It looks like they're like either we hit a home run or this shit is just failure. Yes. And I think it's going to do well. I think it's going to do well. Yeah. I, I, I trust them. Not only that, I I've heard, I don't know if you've heard this, but I've heard uh, or saw on, on various sites that they at Marvel Studios, they like this so much. Now, probably, you know, they finished principal photography a couple, two or three weeks ago. So they're in the process of editing this and adding CG and everything. But they, they got a rough idea of what this movie is. And I've heard that they like what they see so much that potentially they are altering Kang Dynasty, which we know is being rewritten right now, but they're potentially altering Kang Dynasty to include Wolverine and Deadpool. I don't believe the Wolverine part, but I do believe the Deadpool part. I don't believe the Wolverine part because I think Hugh Jackman is just like, come on, man. Like, I can't keep doing this shit. But I do believe the Wolver the Deadpool part. What do you think? I'm surprised they're still going on with Kang Dynasty. I was just Oh, surprised oh, by that. oh, they're st they're definitely they're gonna. Re I think they're gonna recast. I've heard Coleman Domingo as we we talked we talked about this before, but Coleman Domingo, possibly. But yeah, they're still doing Kang Dynasty. The guy that's writing uh, Avengers, uh, what is it? Avengers uh, Secret Wars is also doing that one. So <clears throat> the and fact th that he is trending, <laughs> it's. It's look, Deadpool. It, Deadpool, I think, outside of the main strip, the main Avengers, you know, the, from the Avengers, you know, the uh, up through Endgame. Aside from Black Panther, like Black Panther, and the uh, the you know the original Avengers and Spider Man. Well, and for this is for Marvel characters. Deadpool is definitely that guy. Like everyone knows Deadpool. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, like, so when he says he's Marvel Jesus, that's not a bad, I mean, I'm not saying he, you know, he's talking himself up too much. No, I like people know him. They know what he looks like. They know Ryan Reynolds. And when we see him, not if, when we see him stand shoulder to shoulder with the, the other Avengers, the existing Avengers, you know, the ones they're going to try to push forward now that the old ones are gone. I think it's going to be obvious that that he's going to be a major player. In fact, it may even be that they try to do the Avengers with Deadpool because in the comics, it's canonical in the comics. He has been an Avenger. So it's, it's possible that they may see this may be a Harley Quinn situation. Is that a fair comparison? This is going to be hilarious. <laughs> if if the Avengers think they, they could contain him, <laughs> uh, it, it, in the comics, Captain America he he respects Captain America, and it was old Captain America too. He respects Captain America enough to basically be a good team player, even though he's kind of an idiot. But I think that this has to be a Harley Quinn situation where they realize, like, yo, he's too big a character. He brings the juice. We've got to have him. To kind of like you know pump up this this lineup, and I think that it's and also with his fourth wall breaking and everything like that, I think it's a given. 
So we'll see. We will see. So anyway, great, great trailer. Great introduction to this third movie. And we're really looking forward to it. And we're looking forward to the next trailer. Uh, and we'll let you guys know what we think about that one when it drops. So uh, anyway, that's all of our news for this week. Uh, so, God, this is a good week for, for superhero stuff. Uh, but maybe we missed something or, you know, you agree, disagree, maybe just had something to say uh, about what we were talking about. Whatever the case may be, get down to the comment section and, and leave your thoughts there. And, of course, you can always hit us up, supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com, blurred underscore force one on threads and on Instagram, and it's still super underscore not underscore funny show on TikTok. And uh, while you're doing that, get down there, hit like on this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, and hit that notification bell. Uh, all that good stuff helps with this channel, helps more people, uh, you know, to see this channel and see our content. And if you are following us on a podcasting platform, do us a favor and uh, leave us a review. Five stars will be the best, but whatever you think we deserve. And of course, I can't do this by myself. You know, uh, Lottie, uh, that's my dog that talks about the video games and, the, you know, all the movies and, uh, you know, TV shows, and everything like that. Keeping up with animation, especially. So, uh, Lottie, where can they uh, reach you on social media? You can always find me on my Instagram and YouTube, which are both named on Okinion. A-N-U-K-I-N-I-H-U-N. Again, it's A-N-U-K-I-N-I-H-U-N. I just bought Hell Divers 2. So maybe this Friday I might stream it. And not only on YouTube. I might start streaming on Twitch. A so what? watch out for that. A what? You need you know what you know you know what you need to stream? You need to stream teaching your boy how to play Tekken. Cause I don't know <laughs> what the fuck I'm doing. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I just recommend you play the story mode. <laughs> I, I'm I need to get out there. Story and get, mode will teach you. I need to get out there and get my ass whooped. So we'll we'll see. Uh, but yeah, you guys uh, go check out Lottie's uh, you know social media. Show them some love. All that good stuff. You know what to do. So thanks again for joining us. This is episode one thirty nine of the Supercast, and uh, we're just chugging along. We're waiting for March, man. Like March is going to be be the time. Uh, and also we're just, uh, keeping plugged into social media. James Gunn is out there telling all he, he telling it all. You notice that Lottie, he's just out there giving it all, giving away all of the, the, the insider, uh, secrets and stuff like that. And I love it. Uh, cause it's, it's good. We're, we're getting more and more excited about the DCU, uh, less excited about the Sony Spider-Verse, but you know what? Hope springs eternal. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll be better this year. Maybe this will be the year of Sony, uh, or something. <laughs> but either way, you guys come back next week. We're going to talk about more superhero stuff. We're going to uh, hopefully actually talk more in depth about Madam Web and what the hell is wrong with it. And uh, plenty more superhero things. So until then, I've been Mo, your commentary extraordinaire on all things pop culture. Joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,